Neolith embraces the longevity of construction materials in architecture by developing a lithic structural framework that operates at an ecological timescale. This is reflected in the openness of the structure, which supports the addition and subtraction of new material layers throughout time. As described by Stuart Brandt's shearing layers, different material layers in a building correspond to different timescales. The site precedes the building and continues to exist even after the building is gone. The structure enters the entirety of the building's lifespan and acts as the framework for the rest of the layers. We are interested in exploring how stone, in different forms, can act as both the structure and skin of a building. Stone is available on every continent in the world. Thus, it can be sourced locally. It can last for hundreds of years and outlive other materials. It has a propensity for biopropagation, which can promote the growth of non-human organisms like algae and moss. These are some of our initial formal experiments, where we develop spaces and textures that incorporate some of the qualities of stone, such as porosity, surface articulation, assembly, massing and boucher. We utilize picks to picks to build tools that enhance our design capacities by embedding environmental intelligence to the act of drawing lithic structural layout while retaining authorship. Utilizing procedural dependency graphs, we produced our own datasets. We identified different characteristics in the structural layouts of ancient stone buildings, such as stepping, symmetry, and pochet, to inform our architectural systems. In our initial datasets, we generated layouts with different zones of density that indicate moments of structural and spatial redundancy following the material logic. Based on these results, we developed a design criteria that would influence our computation logics by incorporating four zones. A dark zone for tech, a Goldilocks zone for human inhabitation, an in-between zone that integrates both human and non-humans, and a wilderness zone. For computational logic 1, we ran a sun analysis that allowed us to evaluate the site in terms of degrees of solar gain. The structural layout becomes a heterogeneous network of spaces that provide environmental conditions to suit human and non-human inhabitants. For the second computational logic, a gestural sketch becomes the driver for the location of an open space in the wild zone. The criteria for subdivision acquires intelligence by taking into consideration both sun analysis and the proximity to open space defined by the subjective input. In order to embed three-dimensional information into our floor plans, we introduced a stepping condition, which contributes to its structural stability for longevity and future intervention, and its surface articulation to promote new environments. Our third computational logic utilizes the procedures developed prior, as well as the stepping condition. The buildable area, determined by the solar analysis, gets subdivided into irregular orthogonal interlocking regions. The region with the largest area becomes open space. The borders between these regions open to allow for wilderness to spread through the site. The edges are divided and dissolved to introduce flexibility for future intervention and openness. By incorporating the stepping condition, the output depth map becomes an informed floor plan containing three-dimensional information for further translation. For the secondary structure, we use the output depth map obtained in our latest computational logic along with a gestural sketch that became its guiding input. This sketch generated color values which indicate height based on its proximity to the primary structure. This generated an infilling secondary structure. The three-dimensional logic was developed by infilling the stepstone structure with a secondary one guided by the gestural sketch and corresponding height. We then started experimenting with an infilling secondary structure that also added to the variation we were trying to achieve. We experimented with different inputs to create our own datasets for training. Colors indicating open space, the buildable area, or infilling structures. However, the results we got were very fragmented. Then we realized that by implementing architectural notation, we were able to improve these results and expedite the training process. 
we selected the dataset that provided us with more continuity and legible structure to move forward with the design. After training, the new depth map image serves as an index for extrusion values. We follow a similar stepping process as before. This condition became intensified, providing spatial and structural redundancy. We utilize the space created by this new structure to intervene with secondary enclosures that provide the skin and space of the building. We divided the walls into two categories infected walls for those in direct contact with the stone and non-infected ones for those detached from it. Non-infected walls are constructed out of timber to span across the structure and become the skin of the building, while infected walls are subdivided and evaluated based on their proximity to the structure to create layers of 3D printed stone that serve as intermediaries between the lithic assemblies and the timber enclosures. We develop a system of interlocking lithic components that resemble the assembly logics of the stone structures found in Puma Punku, where similar, non-identical members form larger megalithic structures. This logic allows for variable configurations and multi-materiality, promoting future intervention on the skin. This allowed us to open the structure from within to create pocketed spaces such as the ones observed in the ancient lithic structures that influence our logic. Our tectonic system integrates structure, quarried stone deployed on site, and 3D printed stone components with high resolution texturing that operate as the skin of the building. This assembly of parts emphasizes the interaction of different material layers in the building and allows for future replacement and intervention. As noted by Stuart Brand, these layers age and weather at different time rates. Thus, by accentuating this process in strategic regions, we can display the material's interconnectedness with nature to promote new ecological aesthetics and maximize the utilization of the structure, the building's most longible layer. In order to promote interconnectedness with the environment, Stuart Brand's shearing layers serve as a guide to segregate different building components according to their longevity and function. All of these layers connect into an assemblage of different materials making possible future assemblies and disassemblies congruent with their lifespans. The structure is hollowed out, utilizing the same color information from the machine learning output. This provides accessibility and space, while retaining its structural capacities. The profile of the structure is transferred to the intersecting walls. A capping layer is 3D printed to adapt to the intricacies of the structure. A system of interlocking 3D printed components channel rainwater around the megalithic structure to elongate its lifespan and intensify weathering on its surface. The resolution of the texture is calibrated to create an intermittent flow of rainwater promoting organic growth on its surface. The skin is the layer of the building with direct contact to the weather and with the highest exposure to environmental conditions such as sunlight and rain. We are utilizing 3D printed stone to create a skin sub-layer in the weather-prone areas within the timber enclosure. This material can take intricate forms with high-resolution textures, which contribute to its propensity for biopropagation, and it is capable of being dismantled and recycled after its use. For this, we created an artificial weathering tool utilizing Pix to Pix, which uses rain and sun analysis to predict areas where most weathering will happen. The skin of these areas will be constructed out of 3D printed stone. By creating procedural models and running them through rain analysis simulations, we created new datasets to train the machine to identify the weather prone areas based on the different depth levels of each elevation. We then generated six volumes to run the artificial weathering tool to generate color depth map for prediction. Most of the rainwater concentrates at the corners. Thus, this condition acquires intricate texturing through the use of 3D printed stone. A set of factors responsible for the habitation, propagation, and growth of non-human organisms were considered to design the textures. These 3D printed textures will be applied to the areas indicated by the artificial weathering tools. A dataset is created by using the fully weathered building facade. The radiation map helps establish a relationship between sun and staining. 
The elevation obtained after rain analysis is used as an input to generate a predicted staining map. And then a criteria is set up to evaluate the design. A combination of solar and rain weathering prediction tools, along with textures that intensify these conditions, are applied to a portion of the design to visualize its effects. This is a visualization comparing the aspect of the materials before and after being exposed to the weather. According to the London Plan of 2021, we selected a site in central London in the area of Twitter Fields. This area has a mix of high-rise and mid-rise buildings. We utilize our latest drawing tool, which allows us to input a desired floor plan layout and obtain back a grayscale depth map to generate a primary structure with the desired characteristics.